And we're live. So welcome to the third meeting of the IPFS DAPS working group. We're going to kick this off with Ed, who's going to give us a demo of this uh, extension who, uh, that he's built that will check the integrity. So with that, I hand it over to you, Ed. Thanks. Uh, I have to restart Firefox, unfortunately, to give it permission to share the screen. So I'll just be two secs. Sorry about that. Pretty good to me. Hopefully you can share my screen too. Uh, let's have a look. Cool. So yeah, I was working on um, this problem. Um, we're basically um, trying to reduce the trust in running web apps. Um, and uh, it's basically trying to work around browser APIs, which uh, make, it, make it quite challenging. Um, with Chrome extensions, you used to be able to do, um, you used to be able to intercept responses and requests and sort of read them, and then you could check the integrity there. But in the latest uh, Chrome, or in the latest extension manifest version, they actually deprecated those APIs, and <clears throat> it's a lot more challenging now. So anyway, I was looking for alternatives and found uh, an API uh, in the debugger API that allows you to basically intercept responses. So I've built a quick um, proof of concept um, that basically has a server which can serve a client side app. Um, and then the Chrome extension, uh, when it's installed, will uh, just look for that server request, block it, and then basically um, attach a debugger to monitor the next request we're going to send out. We'll send another request to that server, and then we'll actually be able to read the response in that request and then ch check its integrity. So let me just see if that's running now. Oh, da, da, da. oh it's 91. Right, so... So, so here's the server so serving the client side app. And if I refresh the page, um, we can see that it's blocked. Um, now, I'll just get code. Ah, classic, classic uh, demo, <laughs> live demo. I've made a code change. I have no idea what I've broken. Um, <laughs> so it's not going to be a very good demo. But uh, let's just see if reloading it helps. Yeah, no, that that's correct. So. I've got a, yeah, so this app is just really straightforward. It's literally just uh, Hello World saying I'm a verified app. And um, if, so if the, I've got integrity hash representing this client side app. So if I now modify this server code to return something else and refresh the page, um, it shows that the request was blocked, um, which is what we want. Uh, and if I now change the code back to be the original request, uh, the original response, and refresh the page, I see the actual app. Yeah, it's, it maybe doesn't make the best demo because you can't see the code changes I'm doing. But yeah, effectively, I'm just altering the server code, which is obviously changing the hash. Um, and the extension knows what the hash should be, so it's, it's able to block it based on that. Uh, but the main interesting thing to note is that we're able to get this working with uh, Manifest version 3, which was Previously, um, it, it was quite a challenge. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'd like to maybe interject a couple of notes because I, I. Yeah, I'd like, like to maybe interject a couple of notes because I, I had a look at the. 
Ed, Ed, Ed can you mute because it replays? Yeah, thanks. So I had a look at the code and from what I gather, uh, currently sort of, this is really a proof of concept, but what you're doing there really is you've got these two components. You've got this really simple HTTP server. We can think of this even as maybe a trusted IPFS gateway. You're just making a request to it and you're getting this static, hello world, I'm a verified app. And then you've got the second component, that's the extension code. And in this extension code, you have, uh, currently you're hard coding the hash, but what you're doing is you're getting the response and then you're hashing that using the web crypto API using SHA-256 and you're verifying that. And then based on the verification there, you're actually uh, either allowing the request through or you're rejecting it. Is that a, a fair way to sort of put this in context? Put this in context? Yeah, it's exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. So what's currently a hard coded SHA hash could yeah the idea is we can replace that with um something like uh helia to do to do actual cid uh verification so if it was an ipfs gateway we could say hey i know you're trying to load this from the ipfs gateway um but i can actually verify the integrity on a top level navigation in the browser so it basically means we gain trustlessness end to end like in the browser um for, for these requests. Are there, um, I, I, uh, you know, I sort of, I, I, I wish Lytle was here, but I guess I'll watch the video. Um, are there limitations with the debugger API and like, what's sort of like, what's, what's allowed with MB3 things? And I'm, I'm thinking in the context of like, all the people who are very sad that they have to start using declarative net request uh, and otherwise async things like why do, why are they, not, what are, what are we doing or what works for us that wouldn't work for them? That's not making them flee over here as well. Right here as well. Um, yes. Yeah, good question. So yeah, they do restrict what you can do with the Chrome debugger API. Um, but what they do permit is the API I'm currently using. So it's not restricted. It, it, it's, it's permitted uh, in any Chrome extension. Um, it's not universal. You obviously can't do the same thing in Firefox, but um, my understanding of Firefox is we don't really have an issue there because um, we have like filter response data, which is permitted in, uh, in manifest V3. Um, so yeah, we would be able, to, in theory, we should be able to write the same uh, integrity check using that API in Firefox. With, with, yeah, you would have to do one for Firefox and one for um, does are just the things that we're relying on, like because we're just doing like fail and continue as opposed to actually modifying the responses, which is I think what all the shenanigans with the ad blockers is about is they don't want to go like modify the ad blockers the responses. is about is they don't want you to like modify uh, the responses potentially that's it yeah so this api doesn't um allow you to modify the response you can just uh intercept and read it and then either continue with it or block it which is perfect for 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 for, for what i needed it for for, for this integrity checking uh on, yeah not not don't think we ever need, well, at least for, for the use case I was thinking of, we don't ever need to modify a response. Um, we just want to ensure that it's But yeah, the blocking web request stuff, I think is deprecated in V3, like whether it's Firefox or not. So even if it works now, we won't be able to use that. Um, moving forward so but 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 from what i saw the filter response data api is um valid in manifest v3 for firefox
So this adds an integrity check to the web page, right? Is, is there an integrity check on the supply chain of the web extension itself? The web extension itself? Um, no. So that's, yeah, that's just whatever's in the Chrome store you have to trust. Um, unless you're a power user and want to actually, you know, compare the hash of whatever you download, that's possible, but yeah. That's, that, that's an, in, that is a good problem to look at as well, but yeah, it's, this was just, this was trying to solve a server response for, for, for like apps that you want to load. Awesome. Yeah, it, it works. It looks like it's good for that. Do you have a concrete idea of what would be the next step? I mean, intuitively, what comes to my mind is what I also replied on Slack when you shared it, which is it would be interesting to combine this with an approach where you start with a SID and you try to sort of, uh, I, I believe in Chrome, you can do, you can register a protocol handler, uh, that is for IPFS plus web, or is it web plus IPFS? Um, and then, yeah, that's the one. Um, and then from there, actually try to start doing the verification, um, perhaps using some Helia HTTP stuff. I, I'm not sure about the constraints of actually opening up the um, arbitrary requests within that context of an intercepted request and, and how long of a timeout you have, especially if you're starting to fetch blocks from a, from a, a different origin, from a, a different origin. Yeah. Yeah. The timeout question is a good one. I, I'm not, I'm not sure about that at the moment. What, what, what kind of uh, timeout restrictions might be in place, but um, yeah, the protocol handler thing is quite a good idea. It would be nice to, um, to, to sort of have it automatically respond to those. I know it can't intercept, it can only intercept HTTP uh, and WSS. Well, I'm not even sure WSS, but with it can definitely only intercept uh, HTTP protocol. It wouldn't pick up something like web plus IPFS, but what you could do is if you've got the PWA or the protocol handler registered somewhere, um, then you could basically, um, yeah, it'd be like a two-step process. The, PW, the, the PWA service worker picks that up and then that would eventually trigger an HTTP request. Um, uh, wait, would it? Yeah, I don't know. I need to think about it some more, but um, I, I know that the Chrome debugger is only for HTTP. Right, you, sh you should be able in your protocol handler to, to intercept the request and, and do whatever you want with it. Yes, it's just, I guess, the protocol handler is never actually going to make an HTTP call. Well, it would, I guess it would use like a Helio, an IPFS client, JS yep. client to, yep. to fetch, yep. which yep. which would eventually use HTTP, wouldn't it? If you're using like the trustless gateway block brokers, that's still going to be HTTP calls. Um, yeah, in my mind, I actually just pictured this working on like for my use case specifically an ENS gateway. Um, but if, but it, but also then it's not a huge leap for it working on um, IPFS gateways as well. So a user would, you know, go to hash.ipns, uh, ipfs.dweb.link. And instead of that, so, so now what we can do is ensure that that is it, the integrity passes for that top level request. Um, but it would be nice if we could introduce uh, add protocol handlers in there as well. I mean, if this is handle, if this is a protocol handler written through an extension, it could use web transport as well to to hit to hit a libp 2 p node, right? Yeah. Uh, although you don't. I mean, it, it depends sort of where you want to plug this in, right? Like the, the, the simplest thing that you could probably do here is just say that 
I'm verifying, I'm verifying the the hash of like the HTML root page. At which point you then hand it off to like regular non-extension y service worker things to handle all the normal browser stuff. Um and and the the root page, right? Like the HTML should be really small, mm -hmm. right? Like no one's sending like 10 megabyte HTML documents. So that whole thing should be like a single, should be able to just be a single raw block anyway. Like, yes, there, there are people who are using like the, you know, DAG PB wrapped leaves thing, but like, if you just wanted to get things started at the very least, you could probably start with like single, single raw block root thing. Single raw because, block root thing. Yeah. That's because, right. I totally agree. And that's actually exact, exactly how I was thinking of it. So like, we don't have a problem once we're in a service worker for doing trustless fetching, like we can do that. Like that's already solved. The part that we didn't have is like, how can you get to that initial payload in a trustless way? And that's all this does is basically like, yeah, maybe I wouldn't envisage this being used for like, hey, let's browse anything on the web. Well, maybe eventually it could do that, but really this was just like how can i get a payload trustlessly and then that payload itself can do all the like downstream trustless fetching for whatever it wants to whatever it wants to serve um in its like dumbest like simplest form you could imagine like we literally use it to return like an in in like a index.html with a helia client and then that helia client can like do you hand off all the rest of the, of the trust? Yeah, I mean, it also allows you to, because you're not allowed to modify, if you're not allowed to modify the responses, right, then, then if you don't want to have to like fetch all of the data through the, through, the the origin server anyway or right? if you want to be able to move towards pulling data directly from from the network then you wouldn't be able to do this in this kind of extension anyhow right so you're sort of already kind of better off shuffling into um it's like normal browser service worker land uh browser service if you can Yeah, I think that makes sense to me as well. Cool. With that, I think we can move on to the next topic. Um, I don't know if you want to discuss this here, Robin, but um, so I, I shared the article that you wrote. Thank you, by the way, for really uh, publishing that so early, Ed, and, and getting that out. Um, I think we now have this kind of like content piece that we can point users to. I'm also working uh, on the content piece that you've also had a look at. Um, and it's sort of evolving as we're making all of these discoveries. So I'm hoping to really incorporate a lot of these insights um, as we discover them and as we develop them and push them further. But with that, um, Robin had a bunch of questions that he dropped into uh, Telegram. I've copied them over here into the meeting notes just so that we can get this on track and maybe sort of start a discussion around this. I think a lot of the questions are centered around the install land approach, basically this kind of like a local um, DAP installer approach that you lay out in the article and that I believe is implemented in install land. So with that, um, Robin, I'll hand it over to you so that you can unpack. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I didn't want to like rush ed with a bunch of like questions all of a sudden if if you prefer to to handle some of those async that, that that's perfectly fine as well um I, I these are just like the things i thought of as, as i was reading the 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 article um but yeah i don't know if you've seen if, if you've seen the, the 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 questions but i'm i'm quite interested in 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 basically the general mechanism um you know how how the installer uh works what kind of security model um sit, sits around installed apps um you know what the format is uh, etc et yes yeah yes yeah. so 
Yeah, the app installed a fully offline interactive browser APIs. Yes. Well, yeah, so it's it's really not trying to change whatever the developer has written their app or front end remains the same. Um, and there's no restriction on browser APIs. Um, whatever they were calling before will still go through. Um, the only difference really is that the the service worker is um, is basically ensuring that, well, it's basically pulling in the source code for the front end to the user's local device. So um, that's a one-time thing. And then any subsequent request is, is then gonna serve them that front end source from their local machine. Um, it doesn't add any uh, CSP or any, it doesn't add anything to the code. It just takes whatever the whatever code was in the front end and bonk, bonks it onto the local device, basically. But so, so that that means if the so so that that means if the uh, do you mind do you mind yes yeah. um, that means if the if the if the DAP is written in such a way that it hits existing uh, Web two APIs, um, it won't be blocked, right? So it 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 doesn't. It doesn't have a strong imposed security profile. People can still write these things in a very stupid way that that load, you know, scripts off uh, random places of the internet and 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 share data in, in in wrong ways and basically open themselves up to script injections and 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 uh, stuff like that. Um, the reason I mentioned CSPs is um, some of the other uh, systems that people have been uh, toying with, like with PeerGoss or Tiles or stuff like that, actually block any kind of further loading. And so basically there's the initial payload that you can load that is limited to whatever resources you declared uh, as needing to run your app. And then any other any further network request is blocked. Um, this of course is extremely limiting for a number of things, but it means that you're, you know, if we're talking about pro properly decentralized DeFi front ends, um, it means that you, you you're really restricted to what you can call through a wallet, for instance, or whatever the, the browser um, offers locally. So I, I think that's an interesting thing to look into. I, I think that's an interesting thing to look into. Yeah, no, I agree. And a few other people have brought this up. Um, you, you guys might have saw last week that there was this um, this ledger hack where one of the libraries was basically doing one of the front end libraries was doing a a runtime call to pull in its latest code from npm and one of his npm keys got compromised and so they put a malicious uh a malicious version out and because of this the fact they were doing this runtime call to inject a js into the wallet literally every single DeFi app that used this uh ledger connector was live affected like it is a very very bad security practice to be doing that anyway but even if they were doing the standard npm versioning that would have required developers to to update um that would have like at least mitigated it somewhat but um yeah what th so that came up and then what i was thinking is i personally want this to be as minimal as possible and not do any impose anything on the developer or the code they're doing like that's like another problem space which i think is definitely worth exploring and could be utilized but it i don't know if it should be baked in by default but what you could do is is like to cover that issue you would yeah the service worker would be able to intercept any call that's going to um dot js files or yeah effectively to, to to any uh external js and just sort of you could warn the user um that they're using a DAP, which is live updating JS at runtime. Um, that should be fairly straightforward to do in the service worker. It, it, it wouldn't work if you if you try to match on 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 JS because like the the app can still do lots of stupid things. Um, I, I I would tend to think that if if we really want to push for a model where DAPs are, 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 are you know, solid and robust and something where you can put them in front of people and go like, look, this is something, if you use it, you know that your money's not going to get stolen. We can absolutely verify things. I, I, think it, I think it would be interesting to, to push the security boundaries on this uh, a bit more because uh, I have zero trust that, that developers won't, won't do stupid things, to be honest, from experience. 
is to be honest from experience well, yeah no i think they definitely will um well, i guess i would just differentiate here like like i do think all that stuff is super important it needs to be done but what this was trying to do was was not make it so that it's not trying to make DeFi apps safe themselves it was just trying to solve the that distribution issue which is how can i get my app to users um in a secure way and in a way that's compliant with uh legislation um that's that's you know basically targeting people that are running public web servers for for, for front ends that's the only two problems it's like trying to solve but the I do see that there's like a sort of opportunity to be able to introduce even more like, like, like what you're talking about, trying to actually give confidence that the DAP itself isn't doing anything risky. But I do think that is a different problem. Like, yeah, it's, it doesn't need to be solved in this solution. Uh, personally, that's, that's how I view it. Um, Yeah, I, I think I tend to agree, which is like the, we're also trying to like shuffle shuffle the developers along a path to make it easier for them to do things better, you know, better tomorrow than they were doing yesterday. Um, and so just helping like, okay, this is how we're going to do the basic distribution and then finding other ways we can give sort of like, you know, you know, carrots or stamps or whatever to help people like move things closer towards, um, you know, better security practices, whether that's like, you know, uh, I used an actual random number generator, um, that was good for cryptography or I, I, you know, I put in hashes of my dependencies instead of pulling them from places that, that change over time or whatever, um, can probably come come afterwards because you want to lower the burden for getting people to start to start using and and like benefiting from this compared to you know if you look at uh you know ed's ed's uh, article the the top is just a list of the various twitter posts of various front ends that have been compromised for you know silly reasons that we can probably at least try and 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 limit those um right uh before we before we move on to the things that are are uh are are maybe a little more difficult or or at least require more changes on behalf more work for the developers um this hopefully requires not so much work for the developers if we if we get it right i mean i'm i'm still hesitant to agree here cuz i think there are two issues one one you mentioned the legal issues and if your if your like HTML shell isn't hosted, um, you know, on 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 some kind of centralized uh, server, but you still your API is still hitting a centralized server to load its JavaScript and to hit some APIs, then you're just in the same you're, you're in the exact same legal situation where a, anyone can hit your dependencies instead of instead of hitting your your, your primary shell. So I'm I'm not sure it solves the um, the 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 legal the, the legal side of things you know not not being a lawyer and this not being legal advice but I'm not sure the legal side of things is solved unless we can guarantee that everything is loaded um, in in a secure way um, and thick and and secondly if you look at the list of of those compromises a lot of those are are not because the the root HTML page got um, it was hacked in in some cases yes but not not in all cases in some cases it, it could be a dependency. Um, and the second, the second you're loading a script or or even rely on 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 an API for anything significant, um, you're basically opening an ejection pathway. Um, I, I I think that for most DApps, uh, you I mean, definitely DeFi DeFi apps for sure. Um, you really shouldn't be touching the network once your once your UI has ha, has loaded. I, I I I'm I'm so I'm not sure that the delta for developers is that is that far off. Um, and the and the risk of people doing doing stupid things is really high. I would contend. I, I put it differently. I, I worry that if we promise that this makes things better and it doesn't, um, then then we're we're shooting ourselves and 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 our users in the foot.
Yeah, I mean, the, the DeFi hacks I linked um, were all to do with the domain registrar being social engineered, and then they basically had that domain serving a fake malicious front end instead of the real one. So that's the issue, really, this is trying to mitigate, which is um, that when you go to the, that URL, you have to trust that it's not a malicious one because you can't verify. In this approach, uh, you can verify that the code you're running is the one from the developers, the one that came from um, the one that comes from their source code repository. That That's really all, what this is addressing, which would have mitigated those hacks um, that I linked. Because obviously all those front ends weren't serving the same front end, which is stored in their source code repository. It was a malicious one. It doesn't help with the ledger type of hack, like supply chain attack. Uh, at all, but that's not what it's trying to. Right, but you, you can use the exact same attack on, on the domains of dependencies. That, that's true. So I think. Yeah, I mean, if you know, it's, like, it's, it's like partial, it's, it's making progress, right? So, so, you know, you would hope, right? So like one would, one would have hoped, right, that that you know maybe so like ledger or something like further down the supply chain would have been maybe you know maybe would have been like a little a little more careful than the many things that rely on it maybe not right um and 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 so i i think it's fair i think it's fair to say that you may want to have a a sandboxy way of like saying this is this is like you you are in a you are you are in a safe space right um although maybe you still end up in some tricky spots because a lot of these these uh dApps use you know uh even if they're not loading let's say javascript remotely they're using they're hitting other endpoints remotely um to to load to load state from them right they're not just going to like some chain they're going to like my server.com right and if you can compromise whether the domain name or the server is for myserver.com, you're also in rough shape. Um, maybe it's a little different because those APIs are like more restrictive. Most of them don't just return code that you call, you know, eval on. Um, but I mean, I, I it's it's probably good to say like maybe sort of like in parallel, like what 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 would be required to have an environment that's like the you know the equivalent of like the https like here's your here's your here's your lock icon everything is safe you're in you're in a safe spot as opposed to again just like better than yesterday i i like i i hesitate that i hesitate to try and fix everything I once think. just because just because I, I think that's what's led to some of like the divergence and in, in the space between like there's some groups that have maybe harder harder ux and things are like um sort of like very precisely correct and some groups that are like full yolo mode um <laughs> and and a bunch of users in between who are like everyone's promising that it's all going to work or is almost going to work or is almost going to be safe, but like, it's not quite there yet. Um, and, and sort of like leaves them, leaves them in an awkward spot. Leaves them in an awkward spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I view it like this, like at the moment, I can't be sure that I'm running the code, like the front end I'm running is what the developer intended me to run. Like that's the problem I see right now. Like whether the developer has then chosen to do very like is chosen to do stupid things or dangerous things is a very important problem space to explore and work on but what but that isn't the problem that this that i was trying to solve the problem was how can i be sure that i'm running what the developer intended me to run um the yeah um, what what yeah i mean on the I mean, definitely for like this is one part of that problem. One part of the problem space, and it's a it's an important one to solve because like a lot of the other parts of this problem space, like how can I be sure? Yeah, I got the developer's HTML, but how do I know it's 
the developer's JavaScript, like that loaded from another URL. Um, like that's, you know, but you there, there are a number of facilities, including like the service worker is one option for later on, but then early on for like JavaScript and CSS, there's sub resource integrity, right? Like there, uh, which honestly is like, I don't know if this group is doing pushing browser standards, but like as uh, from the Saturn network where, where, where we've been looking at a lot of this stuff, like, like it would be super cool if somebody resource integrity could be ex extended to a few other tags like images. And like, that would enable a lot of stuff. And it was in the early drafts. Um, and then they just, I think they just kind of were like, well, all this other, this is just going to be too hard if we do it all at once. And then, there was no later, let's do the rest of it. So I don't know if this group wants to put some, attempt to apply some pressure <laughs> into the browser standard space, but like doing it for image tags just for starters would be a big one. Uh, video and audio would be amazing, but like that's, uh, they, even even the early drafts are like, we'll figure out a way to do this. <laughs> like, and they didn't, they didn't get there. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, my, my guess is you can't do like, you know, for, for video, if you're going to do streaming things and nobody's heard of a Merkle is heard of like a streaming hash function before or yeah, a Merkle tree, yeah, yeah. then like, you can't do that, but like, none of them are FIPS. So what will you do? And like, maybe yeah. it's time we, we need streaming hash functions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I mean, like the, the supported set of hashes, I think are just like SHA and, you know, but you could be doing, you could be doing a, a Blake three hash. Oh my God. And, and wow. <laughs> get what they want anyway Ben I was curious like what other so like it's not yeah it sounds like it's if you can't rely on, on HTTPS or something as a as an integrity check you can do this but like it seems like maybe there's some other things too like I if I was going to package web apps I wouldn't and like the most decentralized way I wouldn't necessarily reach for web and you know it's web extensions v3 I might just reach for like an html file so would that work like do we have do we need web extensions for this or could we just could a, a developer just be passing around an html file i mean you can also do i mean like there's ways to hack sub resource integrity without it being an ex a, a, a you know code uh without being a standard i mean you can you can write your image tags with a data dash source instead of a um, instead of a source tag and then like put a data dash hash next to it and put some JavaScript that knows how to evaluate it, fetch the image, check the hash, and then convert it to a source attribute if it's correct. There's like a number of these. There's like so many interesting problems then of like, like, oh, well, uh, I want to catch all the resources that are loaded. Like, well, what about CSS images? Like, <laughs> there's there's a lot of a lot of fun stuff in there to figure out. Right, the extension does solve that one problem that that isn't and nobody's solved yet, which is like, how do you solve? How do you result? How do you know the first index HTML is is the right one? Yeah, I, I don't want to rat hole any further on this conversations, but uh, but I'll I'll point out that if you solve the problem of verifying the HTML, which most of the time is like three tags and the link to a script, and you don't solve the problem of of other things that are loaded, then you're not solving the problem of knowing that you're showing the same UI that that the developer intended. Um, it's 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 too easy to break. Uh, you, you're just, you're, just, you're just moving you're just moving the problem one level down. Um, but it's the exact same problem uh, stays there. Um, uh, stays there. What I meant was published, not intended. So the code they published is what the end user ends up running. That was that was the thing. But yeah, I mean, I t I totally think it's worth exploring. Like, how can we then uh, do more to verify that what the DAP Dev is doing is um, isn't risky? But I, I'm not even talking of risky, right? I'm talking of like making sure we're loading the full resource tree that that they intended without without you know any cra crazy dynamic runtime stuff. Yeah. 
But again, I think we should we should we should move on. We can we can do this async. Hannah, I see I see you still have your hand up. Is there, is there anything oh, you want to no, share? No, 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 no. Sorry. And I and I, my the only thing I would add is that yes, it is does not solve the whole problem, but it solves a part of it that there aren't a lot of other solutions for. So that's useful. Again, and I, I think it was good that we stuck on this point and that you were really pushing hard against this, Robin, because sure you can even embed, you can make sure that your DAP will, you know, include the the, the sub resource uh, hashes for each of the sub resources, but that also doesn't prevent the sort of the runtime verification or, or any runtime sort of fetching that you might do through the fetch API and, and how that might impact um your DAP. Um, these are all difficult problems and I'm glad that we're sort of meeting together here and we're, we're trying to address this in different ways. I, I have just two more topics that I'd like us to just uh, briefly go over. And the first one is Helia fetch efforts. I've, I've linked to the uh, issue and I can open that. And I just want to provide a little bit of uh, background. So a lot of effort has been put into Helia and modularizing um, the whole approach to doing um, IPFS in JS land. And um, we're at this point now where Helia is quite uh, flexible in terms of what it does, but it still uh, sort of uh, packages libp 2 p by default. And sort of one of the insights that came from a lot of the discussions we've had in the previous meetings of this working group is that we need an API uh, that is very, very similar to the fetch API uh, for just doing the simple sort of fetching uh, use case. Um, this is obviously for sub resources. So for anything that you might do during the runtime of an application, like fetching a token list, as is the case of Uniswap. Um, and in fact, this is not actually a new idea. Uh, Ranger Mav has already worked on something uh, like this quite a while ago, even though using some of the older dependencies. Uh, so I just wanted to flag that this is something that we're working on. Um, I think David Justice is, is making some good progress on this. Um, I'll pause there. Anything else you want to share, David, in terms of, uh, we don't need to get into like the implementation details and some of the reorganization, but um, anything important that you think is worth pointing out with regards to this? Um, not quite yet. I haven't been working on this specific thing. I've been working on um, uh, Healy HTTP, which is just going to be only like every, all the PP stuff stripped out, all um, the bit swap, all that. And it's just using the trust escape and verifying them. Um, but it, I'll just say it's, it's getting pretty close and um, I'll hopefully by the next meeting, I can share it and have some examples, but th that will be related to this stuff. It's just, you know, different. Right. And Hannah, I just saw the comment that you left on that issue. Uh, now, anything else you want to sort of share uh, while we're uh, chatting here? Uh, yeah, no, I just I actually put that comment in there because I saw this on the agenda. Yeah, no, it's just that, um, I mean, Saturn had to implement something quite similar to this uh, service worker interception on regular fetch, actually. And then um, also, uh, and then also like the basic process of doing trustless HTTP, take the car, read it out, make sure it matches the hashes and produce the fly file. Um, so you can find a lot of the code in here. Um, it's more mostly like, feel free to <laughs> copy paste or or rip parts out. Um, it's not really, I, I don't think there, there, there's a bunch of other stuff that's going on in here, like sending logs to servers of what happened. So that might, so it's, it's probably not necessarily like, a base for this, but uh, you could probably extract a bunch of stuff. And you can see we use IPFX Unix exporter under the hood. Um, uh, the only thing with IPFX Unix exporter is it does not do, um, it doesn't seem to have support for range on trustless uh, cars at the moment, um, which is a uh, minor, minor bummer. Um, and that would be an awesome thing to add. Um, uh, because we we want to we actually can't support our video right now for that. Um, but it's worth it's worth looking at. So, it, is there an is there an issue for that one? Because I I see in like the IPFS UnixFS exporter API that there's like entry dot content which has an offset and a length, which makes it seem like it should be able to do ranges. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so, I, I 
I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll look. I, I haven't even looked at it. I was under the impression that we were approaching something other than IPFS Unix ex exporter as a potential feature uh, for this, like maybe Dagula or whatever. But like, uh, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, what, uh, yeah. We, yeah but, if it wouldn't be hard to add to IPFS Unix exporter, we should go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know if like if it matters that like the HTTP trustless API does does support like I don't know like uh, it supports non UnixFS data that then links to UnixFS data if I remember correctly. Like you could have the root block be a JSON that then slashes to you know which has a path that supports uh, like a um, yeah, you can yeah. you can have as long as the terminal, but but this is also how how like the gateway API sort of mm -hmm. works is that as long as the terminal element is UnixFS or raw, you're like it'll render normal stuff, and if you need to path through some like Dag Seaboard or something on the way, that's right. doable if you if you want to support that. Um, I. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, even, I don't know if Dagula is using UnixFS exporter under the hood as well. I'm not sure, but... The, I think it's Harold. Oh, no, because they're... Oh, uh, but is Dagula exporting cars? I think I might just be yeah. pulling out cars. Yeah, <laughs> I it's think not it's, pulling I think out, it's any, it's I think it's any... files. No, right. it is not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't so have actually that no, well, the, the, I've been actually working on a commit open link to, and Hoverboard is our team's, uh, like, bit swap equivalent thing like we have there's some other services maybe that kind of will get you like not just a car but other things yeah um yeah so anyway so, we, we but we do need if we want to produce a uh a flat file like like i believe dagula will do will serve starting from the root sid will serve the entire like trustless spec and produce the right car file, but then there's also the like converted to a flag file part. Uh, but it so. Dagula has a, as a dependency IPFS UnixFS exporter. Oh, there so you go. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's <laughs> what it's doing under the hood. Maybe it is. Yeah. Um. So, I, yeah. But I, I guess maybe the the point of of all of this is that I think we have like, I don't know, let's say seven things yeah, that yeah. look a little bit like moving around Unix FSE data in JavaScript. And we should make uh -huh. sure that we have all of all of them and that at least one of them passes enough of the conformance test that people feel comfortable using it behind a fetch. I I like I if people are cool, I think I think probably the 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 U the UX thing that people are going to want to push for is like a thing that just looks like fetch, like the fetch API. Yeah. Um and then if we could just can go <laughs> smush together the right pile of libraries such that that works. Um, yeah. It will be good. I One thing which I, when I talked to Alex um, seemed doable is that um, giving options so that you could either have the fetching backend be sort of like a, a, a block-based thing, whether it's bit swap or block requests or a car request, because it shouldn't matter. So it's a thing like IPFS UnixFS exporter, as long as it's traversing the blocks in the correct order, right? Um, which I think it is, right? <laughs> it's basically Lassie JS. <laughs> yeah, this is the, like we we've done this already. We did this in Lassie. We did this in Bifrost Gateway. Yeah. we're doing this well, here. Well, I mean, but Lassie is it's all code, so it's not very useful for you. For yeah, yeah, time. exactly. But it is it's basically okay. like we'll fetch we'll fetch over whatever protocol and get you back your data <laughs> in a verified way. Which so is we're coming hopefully to learning an end. from the last one. Yeah. Uh, are there any concrete action items that I uh, should put down into the meeting notes? Um, I think we should figure out if there are actually issues with range requests that need fixing. And if there are that we should get an issue filed so we can figure that out. Um, and add that to the the board of the UnixFS fetcher things. Um I, I saw Hannah and and Ben 
drop some some links for for useful things if there's if there are particular areas of what's in this like uh helia fetch for daps issue that you're like it seems like you should copy paste from here um <laughs> please please put them there uh, otherwise people will will sort of best effort look around um through these things and and make sure we're not duplicating much And the range request was something that wasn't supported by the JS Unix FS exporter, right? Or that's the library that we suspect there might be no support for it. Yeah, first verify. I mean, my information is coming from a dev on my team who was like, I can't figure out how to do this. I haven't attempted to go deep myself. I think you could probably prototype that, like the fetch API backed by this last link I just shared. Sorry, so many links, but that does use Helia and fits in uh, to try to resolve like a, not a car SID, but a data SID, and then ask the content claim service for some claims about where it might find that. And if it finds some, it then basically uh, we'll, have, can, we'll end up finding like not just a car file, but what's inside. But But that's that's only going to find things that we have claims for. But anyway, I'm just more like feels like we could at least get some sort of demo working by just wrapping it in a fetch function. Maybe I'll do that. I, I think I think part of this is also getting the getting the, the pieces such that we can get some of the conformance tests passing. Because I I I think there are a few of these running around. There's one that's in like the Helio HTTP gateway. There's another that's in like a service worker. The service worker like demo, there's another that's in the Saturn client. I think there's another one or or two, right, that are are in in like the Daghouse infra. Um so just yeah, just having one one thing that we can wrap wrap and test against, I think is is where we're where we're hoping. Great. So we are at time. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I think the next meeting that we're going to be having is going to be in the new year. Uh, I think we already have it even scheduled already on Luma. So yeah, that's going to be on the 2nd of January, which is soon enough. Um, look forward to seeing you uh, there. Uh, ben, it would be great if you can demo that, if you have something to demo by then. Um, besides that, we'll, we've got the action items. And uh, Ed, really appreciate you joining and just sharing your in insights and, and sort of experimenting along the way. Experimenting along the way. Cool.